Good morning, brothers and sisters, and boys and girls, and ladies and gentlemen. It's great to be together with you and to praise our living Lord together. Before we do that, um, I have a couple of announcements. The BB will start not this Monday because of obvious reasons, but the following on the 26th of September. Um, the juniors are meeting from 7 to 8.30 and company section is from 8 to 10 p.m. And on Tuesday, Anchor Boys. Half six to half seven. Thank you so much. Sorry, I forgot to, to copy it from last week's announcements. So all boys will be welcome to BB and all girls will be welcome to, um, to attend GB. We will have family services on the first Sundays of the month, except for November for the communion Sunday. And these family services will be shorter, all age services, hopefully enjoyable for everyone, a little bit interactive, uh, bringing our unique strengths and gifts um, to the service. And after the shorter service, we will enjoy a couple together. So please prepare and come and spread the word and maybe bring, bring along others from your friends and family as well. There will be a rehearsal for both Yes and um, the first Sunday in October is going to be our harvest service. Um, so that will be a really special time, a family harvest service on uh, the first uh, Sunday of October, on the 2nd of October. There will be a rehearsal for both Caridor and Bolly Black choirs this Tuesday night in Bolly Black from 7.45 p.m. So Tuesday, 7.45. This is the second and last um, choir practice. The first one this week behind us went well, and I'm looking forward to hearing you singing um, at our harvest service. With only two practices, so uh, we couldn't use all our gifts or we can't use all our gifts and all the abilities of our singers, but we will have some more time before Christmas to um, practice more difficult pieces as well. All are welcome um, for the choir practice on Tuesday in Bolly Black at 7.45 p.m. We are planning to restart the Bible class before sir, before the Sunday morning services. So please talk to your teenagers, to teenagers in your vicinity, and to John McLean as well. The 2021 financial report um, is out, are now finalized and have been independently audited. The annual financial report is now available and was sent out to the congregation by email last week. If you are on email and you haven't received the report, please let me know. If you do not use email and would like to receive a copy of the financial report, a number of paper copies have been printed and are available by contacting the treasurer, Mark Lamon. And finally, Paul Bradley's licensing service will be this evening in Melisle Presbyterian Church. He did a placement here in Caridor with Reverend Stevenson, and I know some of our members are good friends with him and his family, and many of you are still praying for them. So Paul Bradley's licensing service will be today at 7 p.m. in Milai Presbyterian. All are welcome to come along and share in this special <laughs> occasion. Now, let's join together in prayer. From sunrise to sunset, from east to west, from earth to heaven, your name is worthy to be praised. Your glory shines above all things, holy God. We worship and adore you, our wonderful creator. As we meet together, help us to be aware of your presence creating us a desire to build your kingdom so that as we listen to your word and sing your praises, 
we will understand how to be your people wherever you have placed us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our opening praise together, all things bright and beautiful. And I need your assistance. Would you please come? All right. Is it scary to be here up front? No. No. They said no. Feel free to come down <laughs> and to come forward if you want to. Okay. We wait for another moment. Welcome. Welcome. Oh, girls, <gasps> and a boy. Good, <laughs> good, good, good. So, boys and girls, um, can you tell us what's Fruit. in here? Fruit, okay. Um, what colors do you see? Uh, colors. Yeah. Anything else? And green? Any any other colors you see? Yeah? I see orange at the bottom. You see orange there? What other colors? White. white? Yes, there's some white as well. Any other colors? Okay, someone who is willing to smell it and tell us how it smells. Okay. Uh, nice. Nice? 
Oh, you got one. It's okay, okay. Anyone, would you like to smell it and tell us? How? <laughs> like strawberries, yeah. Okay, um, so we've got, uh, we've got beautiful, all color, all smelly fruits here, right? If you had to choose between taking some fruits or, or taking some pills, which one would you pick? The fruit, everyone, everyone for the fruits. Okay, what is, uh, don't take them, don't take them, just, just smell them. Do you think they smell good? Are they nice? Yeah, they, do nice. they don't smell nice. Yeah, for, yeah, it, it has a special strong flavor, uh, or sorry, um, a smell. So if, if you had to choose between, uh, between taking some fruit or taking some, some pills, which one you would go for? Yeah, yeah. you are all sure now that, that, that the fruit, yeah. Um, sometimes we do have to take pills, yeah, because, because our body needs that. But if we can choose, we, we would rather pick fruit because pills are sometimes not that nice to taste. They do the job, they do the job, but, but fruits are a lot better, aren't they? You know, when God created the earth, he had to puzzle so many things together so this world would work. And God didn't have to create so beautiful uh, fruit. He, he could have pre created food to give our body energy and vitamins like the pills because human created all these pills uh, and yeah they do the job they help us but uh, but these are beautiful they, they are tasty. Would you like to taste them? Yeah okay here are some toothpicks feel free to pick a toothpick and uh, are they allowed? Yeah, they are. All right. Okay. Um, here you go. Um, please come closer. Take a toothpick and then uh, then pick a fruit that you would like to taste. I do first. Yeah, I go first. Whoop. Okay. Hmm? Anyone? Pick a toothpick. No. Come on. Come on. Here you go. Just tell me whether they taste good or not. Take it through. Yeah, that's it. Anyone else? You like it? Okay. No? I'll go first because my sister. Good. <laughs> Pick one. Would you like to taste it? <gasps> Strawberry. Okay. Come on. I take away this one. Another strawberry. Here you go. Mm -hmm. You like it? Mm -hmm. Who has? You want to try it? Which one? A grape? We have lemons and water lemons and blueberry and strawberry and raspberry. Um, so many other things here. Would you like to go again? Yeah, sure. You like it? Yeah. My little sister copies me whatever I do. A blueberry this time. Yeah. Good. And another one? Something else? <laughs> Why not? The others are not taking. Anyone else? Yeah, here you go. Thank you. I take this one. Will you try it? Or you have your Yeah, here. Take, 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 take. No? All right, so some of you are more adventurous than others, but today's lesson, are they good? <laughs> yeah, I like them as well, I take another one. So, God shouldn't have, um, God didn't have to create f food that is bringing energy to our body like those. He could have created something like this, but God wanted to bring joy to our life, so he created beautiful things in this earth and whenever you you go out and you look around I hope that you will recognize all the beauties all the trees and sheep and uh, mountain peaks and the deep blue sea um, oh, God created so many and the flowers 
God created so many beautiful things. And when you see those beautiful things, just remember that God created them to be beautiful because He is beautiful. We have a beautiful God. So we are going to celebrate Him and His love for us. Uh, the next hymn's words are coming up on the screen. You are going to learn more about God and how He created the world in a moment at Cool Church Kids. But let's stand now. The, the adults are joining us um, to sing this praise. You, you see the words there on the screen. Come on and celebrate His gift of love. We will ce celebrate. I think I need to learn this one. So please help me and teach me this song. Let's sing together. Let's join together in prayer. Lord, we regret the times we have been unwise or shy-sighted, short-sighted, when we have not thought through the impact of our actions. Give us the ability to make adjustments to our lives, to build each other up and to invest ourselves in ways that are beneficial to all. Help us when we get confused, when things aren't black and white, when we injure others and ourselves, when, whether deliberately or, or accidentally, forgive us, restore us and help us to repair what has been broken. God, you turn your face from our wrongdoing, but you do not turn away from us. Every time we come to you, acknowledging our woundedness and folly, you bring us back. You see the person you made us to be and wipe the slate clean again. And there is no residue left behind. No mark on our record that you cannot erase. You embrace us unconditionally and turn our brokenness to beauty. Thank you, Jesus, that you died in our place so that we can live in your place. We praise you, Jesus, for you rose again from the dead. And you are here to comfort and to guide us. Almighty, all-forgiving God, restore us to you and to your community. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You are also our wise and wonderful maker. 
We also thank you for all that you provide. Thank you for the blessings you bring us, big and small. Open our eyes to see all your acts of goodness and to recognize what resources we have. With our offerings, we acknowledge that everything we have comes from you, wonderful creator and beautiful master. Would you bless what we have so that we would use it best and bless what we give to be used for your life-creating purposes. Thank you that we can be part of bringing beauty to the world around us. Thank you for your goodness and for your beauty, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen. As part of our prayers for others, I compiled a prayer for the royal family and for those who are mourning deeply for Her Majesty, Queen Elizabeth, death. But someone sent me an email during the weekend with a video and it resonated deeply with me. I thought it would be best to share it with you. I'm sure you will recognize the melody and if the lyrics are coming up, uh, and you agree with the words, feel free to join in either humming or singing. And I hope we can all say Amen at the end of this prayer. I 
Today we continue in our series one, discovering the power of togetherness as we are created to live in community. Throughout this series, we are looking at what it means to be a community that comes together as one. As a culture, we have a tendency towards independence. And there's nothing wrong with independence to a certain degree but we are wired to do life in community. We are created and called to come together as one. And this is important because when we come together as one, there's nothing we cannot do for the kingdom. Last week, we said that this community of one begins when we recognize what we are, and what that means for our lives. We learn that you and I are masterpieces. God, the one who created this beautiful world, after creation, he said, it is good. But when he created you, he said, it is very good. And as a masterpiece made in God's image, we are called to serve all the other masterpieces made in God's image. And when we recognize what we are, masterpieces, and when we begin to live up to this ideal by serving others the way Jesus serves us, we can come together as a community that serves and ultimately transforms our world for good. Today, we are going to continue looking at what it means to be a community that comes together as one. Our Bible reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 31. This is God's word from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Just, I have to check, this might be a different translation. All right, I will go for this one. The body is a unit, though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit, into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. Now, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the food should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not, for that reason, cease to be part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, 
where would the sense of smell be? But in fact, God has arranged the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. The eye cannot say to the hand, I don't, do, I don't need you. And the head cannot say to the feet, I don't need you. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. And the parts that we think are less honorable, we treat with special honor. And the parts that are unpresentable are treated with special modesty. While our presentable body parts need no special treatment. But God has combined the members of the body and has given greater honor to the parts that lagged it, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And in the church, God has appointed, first of all, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then workers of miracle, also those having gifts of healing, those able to help others, those with gifts of administration, and those speaking in different kind of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, do all work miracles, do all have the gifts of healing, do all speak in tongues, or do all interpret. But eagerly desire the greater gifts. And now I will show you the most excellent way. As we prepare our heart to the hearing of the preaching of God's word, let's stand and sing, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. This is a short one verse hymn, so let's sing it twice. is that we tend towards homogeneity, we tend towards uniformity. Have you noticed we gravitate towards people who are like us, people who look like us, who think like us, who believe like we do, people who vote like we do, people who are the same socio-economic demographic as we are. 
We like to be alike, which is ironic since our culture values and even pushes independency. Be your own person. Have you heard the saying that you do you? Just, just whatever you want to do, just, just create yourself. Do whoever you want to do. We claim to want diversity, but the truth is we really like to be like others. We claim we want diversity. We claim we want to be different. We claim to be very anti-group thinking. But the truth is we really like to be like others. Help me with this education system and your experience as you went or as you are going through it. In Hungary, in secondary schools and in colleges, um, all students had their little interest groups. And between lessons, between classes, they gathered together, sharing their thoughts in small cliques between each other. Is that the same here? Yeah? Yeah? Is that your experience too? Yeah. We really like to be surrounded by others who are like us. If you aren't sure about this, look at most churches on any given Sunday. In fact, in, in America, Sunday mornings has been called the most segregated hour of the week. This isn't necessary because we seek to exclude others but because we are naturally drawn towards sameness. <clears throat> Churches marked by diversity are generally that way through lots of intentional effort. And as I visited many churches, my experience that diverse churches with many different people are usually thriving churches. Next slide, please. Sameness doesn't add life or strength. In fact, it's quite the opposite. The theologian Warren Worsby wrote, Unity without diversity would produce uniformity. And uniformity tends to produce death. Life is a balance between unity and diversity. And as a human body weakens, its systems slow down and everything tends to become uniform. The ultimate, of course, is that the body itself turns to dust, to the ultimate uniformity. Uniformity tends to produce death. Uniformity decreases the strength and value of things. Think of it like this. If, if you have a home decorated with uh, the same masterpiece over and over and over and over again, how, does it, how, how is it called? It's called wallpaper, right? <laughs> the same masterpiece over and over and over again. Now, if, if there's a building decorated with different masterpieces, all sorts of shapes and sizes and colors, how is it called? It's called an art gallery, right? Now, can you imagine anyone planning to break into your home to steal a piece of your wallpaper? of your masterpiece. Do, there might be others who, who are planning to break into art galleries to, to take those masterpieces. Because they can see the immeasurable value in the unique masterpieces gathered together. This may be counterintuitive, but as a church, as the body of Christ, when everything is the same and everyone is doing the same things, we cannot build a community of one that transforms the world. If you are taking notes, please write this down. We are not stronger when we are all the same. We are stronger when we are all different. 
Or to put it another way, when we are all together different, we are more than the sum of our parts. Now, what does it mean? Imagine you have five pallets of exhaust pipes, the very same car parts, or, or three pallets of light bulbs. They are valuable, right? Because they, they are not cheap parts, especially three pallets of them. They, they have value. But, but when all the, all the car parts are put together by, by the engineers, it values a lot more than the individual pieces together. You can go a lot further, right? If, the, if all the parts are put together independently, they are just pieces of metal and, and cables and rubber and plastic. But when they are all put together, functioning together, they go a lot further. So if you are bringing home one sentence, be this one, when we are all together different, we are more than the sum of our parts. When we are all together different, we are more than the sum of our parts. Today's reading was from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. This is a letter written by Paul to a group of Jesus followers in a town where it was very tough to be a Jesus follower. Corinth was a very diverse city. People from all over the Roman Empire lived there. Jews and Greeks and Gauls and Germanic and African, slaves and free, ex-military and those conquered by the military. Many different religious backgrounds, many socio-economic backgrounds as well. And they didn't get all, all along very well because they were different. And the church in Corinth, the community of Jesus' followers, reflected the diversity of the community. This meant sometimes the people in the church didn't get along very well. But the differences and frictions weren't simply limited to race or culture or economics. Some of the friction was caused by the fact that different people had different gifts and different roles within the church. Some were more obvious, like leaders, teachers, and preachers. Some were more behind the scenes, like hospita hospitality and service and encouragement. And just like many of us today, they began to look at each other and even look at themselves and assign value based on how obvious and out front, how desirable certain gifts were. Next slide, please. We make the same mistake in our culture today. Don't assign value based on how out front or desirable certain gifts are. Think about these examples. The CEO is more important than the regional manager. And the regional manager is more important than the store manager. And the store manager is more important than the store assistant, right? This is in our culture. Or, or the headmaster and principal, they are more important than the teachers. And teachers are more important than the classroom assistants. And classroom assistants are more important than the cleaners in the school, right? It's our nature to look at the differences, determine some to be better than others, and then to then pursue the more important positions and to dismiss those in the less important positions. And this attitude carries over into the church. I mean, if you're a preacher or a pianist or an elder, you know a job up front that is visible, then you must be more important than someone who turns on the heating, provides the flowers, 
the tea ladies or the ones who are visiting someone who is going through some tough time and would value some visiting or the person who locks the gate at the end, right? So this little community of Jesus' followers is struggling with the whole difference thing and the whole who is most important issue. As Paul writes this letter to them, he begins to explain the power of differences. Next slide, please. Paul understands those differences, that those differences don't divide us. Those differences, if we allow Jesus to have his way, actually bring us together as one and make us stronger. And that's why he can say this next slide. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit, so as to form one body, whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free. And we were all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. In helping the believers in Corinth work through their differences, Paul goes to one of the best examples from everyday life that he can find. Something every one of us can relate to. And that is the human body. Paul goes on and on about how all these different parts coming together are better than one part. And how the whole thing fails if each part does not show up and play their role. Paul is saying, when we are all together different, we are more than the sum of our parts. There are no insignificant members of the local community of Jesus followers. It doesn't matter what you can do or cannot do. Every one of us who considers ourselves to be followers of Jesus are essential part of our church community. It doesn't matter if you are only assisting at cool church kids, you are an essential part of the body. It doesn't matter if you are only giving someone a lift on a Sunday morning, you are an essential part of the body. And by the same token, there are no members of the local community of Jesus followers who are indispensable. It doesn't matter if you are an organization leader or an elder. You are simply one part of the body, but an essential part. Similarly, it doesn't matter if you are a minister preaching most of the Sundays on the pulpit. You are just one part of the body, but an essential part. Paul sums the whole thing up by saying, now, you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. We collectively are the body of Christ, and you individually are a part of his body. We, as a community of one, are the body of Christ. Paul stays on that theme of the body. The church is called to be the body, the physical representation, the hands and feet of Jesus in this world. But a lot of churches are crippled. I often think the body of Christ comes off as crippled because we don't use our gifts, our talents, our skills, our abilities, and our passion to serve the church and to serve the world through the church. 
You have gifts. You have abilities. You have skills. You have passion. And every one of these skills, in all of their differences, can be used together to create a community of one that changes our world for good. What if everyone here used a skill, a talent, a gift, an ability, a passion to engage in serving the church? And through the church, serve the community around us. Can you imagine what would happen here in Caridor, in the area, in the upper arts, if we would all use what we have in the church? Imagine we take those gifts, talents, abilities, passion, skills out of the church building into our neighborhoods and serve our friends and our neighbors, we would be unstoppable as a church. When we are all together different, we are more than the sum of our parts. In response to this message, I want to issue a challenge. I want to challenge you to step into ministry. I don't necessarily mean full-time preaching ministry, although that may be what God is calling you to do. But I want to invite you to step into ministry. I want to challenge you to take your gifts, skills, talents, abilities and passion and start to use them in the church to serve the world. You may need to spend some time identifying your skills, gifts, abilities, abilities, talents, and passions. So so spend some time identifying them. Ask God to highlight those so you would know what are your gifts. You will need to pray and see where God wants to use those gifts, skills, abilities, talents, and passion. And I would love to sit down and pray with you and chat with you if you are there to support you. And then you may need to explore and be free to fail. Because most of the time we are not successful at the first time we start something new. And you also may need to start something new. Either instead of what you've been doing or or along what you've been doing. Spend some time in prayer identifying your gifts. Pray, ask God where he wants to use you. I'm here to help and support you in that. And then you need to explore. You need to start using those gifts in the church to serve our community. And you might need to start something new. If we all take those gifts, skills, talents, abilities and passions and come together different as we are, we bring, we begin to change our community for good. When we are all together different, we are more than the sum of our parts. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the diversity in which you have equipped each of us. And help us each to grow closer to your Son, Jesus so that we would come closer to one another as well. You can put us together and you can use our differences a lot more effectively than engineers putting car parts together. For you created us to be members of your body, serving each other, working together and reaching out together. You have given us talents to be able to continue to the growth of your church. Jesus, take our hands, guide our feet, fill our mouth, inspire our dreams. May our hearts grow more like yours each day. 
as we look around at the people you have placed in our lives to reach. Help us to love those people in your honor, through our gifts, skills, talents, abilities and passions. Through the distractions of everyday life, allow us to hear your call and follow your ways. In your time, on your watch, in your will, we are ready to obey and to follow you, dear Jesus. Amen. Let us stand and sing our closing praise, proclaiming who we are. Come, people of the risen King.